The Swiss Nazi Templars of Octagon had and still have an enormous fleet of ships that brought the Crusaders to the Middle East and to Jerusalem. The Templars' treasure went to Switzerland, but their fleet was hidden in the north of Britain, obtaining the right to stay in Scotland, also called the Scottish Rite, where the right with R-I-G-H-T became a right R-I-T-E and accepted law. It is therefore no surprise that later on in history with a new fleet of slave ships the black slave trade to the Americas was entirely in Switzerland's hands by the Swiss Nazi Templars and their banks of which I will give you now names of Swiss families, Swiss banks and Swiss companies. Here you can see the Swiss flag at the end of the ship. There it is again, the Swiss flag at the end of the ship zoomed in. So it says in the article, Switzerland played key role in the slave trade. So this is from 2003. Switzerland's involvement in the African slave trade runs deeper than the history books suggest. Being a landlocked country did not stop Switzerland from playing its part in the trans transatlantic slave trade triangle, linking West, the well, linking West Africa, America, and Europe between the 16th and 19th century. Swiss banks, for example, owned as much as a third of the Com Compagnie des Andes a French company that held a, a monopoly over the West African slave trade. Well, they, they ran, I tell you, the Swiss Templar, Nazi Templars, they ran the entire African sl slave trade. This is just the, uh, the tip of the iceberg. Swiss involvement in slavery and the transatlantic slave trade. A merely cursory look at various works and studies into the social and economic history of Switzerland, as well as a rereading of older standard publications, lead to the surprising discovery that the Swiss involvement in slavery and the triangular trade has been much closer than previously known. The Baal based trading company Burkhardt financed commercial enterprises for slave trading in Nantes and in 1790 via its affiliated company, Burkhard et Fils. You see, they, it's, a, it's Bur, Burkhard, and they wrote it down in a French name, Burkhard, you know, they're always hiding things. Contributed to the equipment of a slave ship in which enterprise Christophe Merian took part too. It's a very rich family in Basel. And we find here the word Mer, Mer i An, Mer, it means a pyramid in the Pharaonic language. Ri is the sun. Mer, Ri, An, and On is often used in Pharaonic names. I translated it once. Jens e van Bergem, a company from the canton of Vaud, was engaged in the equipment of slave ships, Pays de Vaud and City of Lausanne. So these are two Swiss slave ships, Pays de Vaud, Wode is a canton in Switzerland, and the city of Lausanne. Lausanne is a, a, a big town in Switzerland. Both of which were bound for Mozambique to transport slaves across the Atlantic. A, a third vessel, the LVT, you know, Helvetic, CH, it means Conf Confederatia Helvetica, that's uh, the name of Switzerland, the Helvetics. It's a confederacy, a, a Helvetic confederacy, that's what it means. Um, later took a similar voyage. Uh, banking firms from Geneva, such as Telusson et Necker, Cotin or Banque et Malais, Cotin, I think it still exists, as well as the trading firm Pico Fazi, financed and supported the trade with African slaves above all via the French seaport of Nantes. Being of Geneva's trading and banking families, Bertrand, Perchier, 
Flournois, Butini, Galatin, Dunant, uh, Henri de Dunant, the guy who invented the Red Cross, made by the Templars, of course. They were the uh, hospitalers. So it's no wonder the, the Dunant family was also in the slave trade. Well, as we know, the Red Cross, they gave a Red Cross passport to the, um, to the German or the, the Swiss Nazis to go to South America. And uh, they are a spy organization. And Fatio owned various plantations. So all these Swiss, they were owning plantations. I told you so about the Ku Klux Klan and Albert Pike and Swiss Phileas Valde. With slaves in the Caribbean also, in Dominica, Grenada, in Suriname, which is, I think it's Dutch. For almost a century, members of Baal, that's Basel's, patrician family Fasch, you know, like the word fascist, it is fash from Baal in Basel, owned plantations with Negro slaves in Suriname. Johann Jakob Hoffmann, or the guy who invented the LSD, also in Basel, they, we all find them again. These are Templars families, took part in the Curacao slave trade. Burns Bank, Marcar, and Zurich's Bank, Loy. They still exist. Acquired shares of the French Comp Compagnie des Andes, a chartered trading company, which among other activities held the monopoly of the West African slave trade. And of those, 31% of the shares were in Swiss hands. Can you imagine? Well, it's just the tip of the iceberg. They were all in Swiss hands. Bernie's banker, Emmanuel Haller, uh, from Bern, a nice place, I used to live there, was a wholesale colonial trader and Zurich's bank, Rougemont, Hottinger and company invested in overseas trade via the French, slaving ports of Lavre, Nantes and Marseille. Members of saint Gall's families Rietzmann, Hugger and Schlumpf, well that's one of the seven presidents nowadays, Wittmer Schlumpf, you know, they're still there. They never were, they never went away. Owned the Suriname plantations L'Alvetia and La Liberté, including their slaves. The Zublin family were the owners of a plantation called Zublin's Lust, <laughs> where they raped all the women, of course, and did dirty things with the children. You know, as I told you, they, you know, the Swiss, the Nazi Templars, or Pharaoh, they make a child with a with a with a with a black person, and the uh, the offspring will be like uh, brown. And if it's if uh, and always raised in a white manner, you know they take the child away with the slaves. It's quite easy. Then if if it's a girly child, if she will make another child with a black man, then the offspring will be much blacker, always raised in a white manner by the Swiss slave owners. The uh, the father never sees his daughter anymore, and after three generations more, the child was black as a um, as a Central African from Congo. But inside, it's what, always raised in a Swiss way, and then they put it as a president and some African state and everybody is pleased and say, well, it's a black brother. And this is how they rape Africa again, once more. <laughs> That's what Swissy always did. Now we've got a Swiss pre uh, prime minister in, in, uh, in France, uh, Manuel Valls, he's entirely Swiss, a Swiss president in the United States, Obama, well, etc., etc. This is where Obama, his ancestors probably, or from the other side, probably came from. There were Swiss plantation administrators in Suriname, among them people from the Grison, Konrad, Appenzell, Schlepfer, and Schaffhausen, Vince. In 1763, Colonel Louis-Henri Fourgeot, I think Vince that was the, con the, the guy who, the commandant of the, an American concentration camp by the Swiss uh, during the Civil War. Oh, no, his name was Wirtz. Uh, Fourgeot from Geneva assisted in suppressing a slave uprising in Berbice. Well, I mean Vince or Wert, <laughs> it's Swiss anyway. Guyana and other uprisings in Suriname. Captain Wipf, uh, Wipf, Vince, Wert, 
<laughs> from Schaffhausen was commander of a Swiss battalion, instrumental in the attempt to re-establish slavery in Haiti. Well, they're everywhere, the Swiss, even in Haiti. In 1652, that was the um, four years after the end of the, uh, the Thirty Year War, an important date, and when South Africa was founded by uh, Jan van Riebeek. Isaac Melville, Melville, a citizen of Baal or Basel, at the service of the Swedish African Company, founded a slave castle off the coast of modern Ghana. Cape Coast Castle. Reinhard Iselin from Basel, Switzerland, became financial advisor to the King of Denmark and a great colonial entrepreneur. In the French seaport of Nantes, five Swiss families were engaged in the slave trade. Oh, they're still there. They must, must be in their hundreds of thousands now. There, the Swiss had the monopoly of the production of Indian textiles, an important good in the triangular trade. Some respectable Swiss merchants, merchant bankers and their families, above all in textiles and colonial products, profited from the transatlantic slave trade through a more or less direct involvement in the triangular trade. The names to be mentioned here are Escher from Zurich, Rita, Winterthur, Zellweger, like the, um, the Swiss um, Actress Renée Zellweger, well, she's of Swiss descent. Well, here they are, you know, slave owners, now making money in the Hollywood uh, indoctrinational industries. And Vetter, Ausserrhoden, Riedi, Basel, uh, Kunkler, and Zolikova from St. Gall, Amman, Schaffhausen. Uh, Schaffhausen, that's also where the uh, um, Jäger, Karl Jäger of the, uh, the Einsatzgruppen, he came from there, and St. Gall, where Hitler's mastermind uh, uh, came from. De Puri, Portalais, Favre, Rossel, Neuchâtel, as well as Labhart and Gonsenbach, Gonsenbach from Thurgau. So they were all Swiss slave merchants. Nice country, eh? I told you so. They had these Swiss Nazi Templars, they still have a very large um, ocean fleet, even today. And of course, during the Nazi times, they were having a very large Nazi fleet, bringing goods for Nazi Germany for their war efforts. It's the same as the Swiss Altakwa Bank, Switzerland's financing of Adolf Hitler, the Swiss Mebo Company and their Radio North Sea Nazi Templar boats, the Swiss Ku Klux Klan, etc., etc. So here you can see a list of the ships of the actual Swiss Navy of Octagon today, bringing Octagon's weapons and other contraband all over the world. The list is so long, I can't get it all on the picture, and it's just the tip of the iceberg of an even bigger hidden amount of Swiss-owned crime ships of that globally operating Swiss crime syndicate. So you can, you can read it. Ocean-going ships under the Swiss flag. It's an enormous list. I put it in the links for you. Just look at it yourself. Switzerland is murder and crime incorporated, and Switzerland always have their dirty little fingers in it. The Swiss Nazi Templars of Octogon are on all key positions in all countries, and they rule the world out of their fortress in the Alps. And of course, also during World War II, this country in the mountains with no adjacent seas, oceans or harbours had an enormous fleet with which the Swiss Nazi Templars could bring raw materials for the German war industry for their Swiss agent, Mr. Hitler, with which the war could go on for a very long time. Believe me. 
The Templars have always had an enormous fleet from the days of the Crusades, for the slave trades, during World War II, and most certainly today, feeding the war in the Middle East. The Nazi Templars have always been doing this, and they will always do so much longer, as long as Switzerland exists. And no government in the world will ever do something against them, because it's the base of Pharaoh and Octagon in the Alps. So this is today, 2016. The Swiss merchant fleet comprises 47 ships, or well, there are many more, owned and operated by six companies. The Swiss Maritime Navigation Office monitors compliance with all relevant legal treaties, <laughs> and the illegal ones, oversees the administration of the fleet and represents Switzerland in international organizations. The Swiss Merchant Marine Fleet consists of 47 ships with a total capacity of 1 million tons, corresponding to 1 promille of global tonnage. The fleet includes bulk goods freighters, container ships, multi-purpose freighters and tankers for asphalt and other products. These ships operate worldwide as needed. Swiss Atlantic Line, Swiss as in Sir Dizis, Isis, their agents, well, they've got many agents like Mr. Hitler, look they're everywhere, New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore, just like the Swiss banks, they're everywhere. Swiss Roll at Sea makes waves in the new book. The story of the merchant fleet, which helped keep landlocked Switzerland afloat during the Second World War, is told in a fascinating new book about the Swiss Navy. There is a Swiss Navy, a, Temp a Nazi Templar Navy. This was during World War II, bringing raw materials to the Germans, and prolonging the Second World War. This is Octogon. And nobody will do anything to stop him. So here you can see a list of Swiss warships or war transport during the war. It says here, Zweiten Weltkrieg. And uh, yeah, they were bringing raw materials and guns and everything to the Germans. Here it says Kriegstransport. That means war transport. Here it says again, war transport, war transport, war transport. Uh, by the Swiss War Transport Office in Bern. Well, it even says in English. And here too, the Swiss War Transport Office in Bern. And they were going, they were on, on the oceans, you know. Honegger and Ascot in London. They're based everywhere, these Templars. And... Uh, you know, all Swiss flags here. Here they hide a, the the red under under the um, under the red cross. You know, but it's the same. The Hospitallers and the Templars. It's one and the same thing. Even in Switzerland, you still got the Hospitallers and the Templars. Just like during the Crusades, nothing has changed. So this was during World War Two, and the list is much longer. It's an enormous list prolonging World War II and our sufferings. This historical documentary with lots of proofs was made by a prisoner of the Swiss. A long-time prisoner of the Swiss. 